All right. Well, we we need to get a sweat rag over Dear here God. because uh, I am I am perspiring <laughs> with with the constant uh, blitz of news that is coming out here. So many on things. Free Agency Monday. So many it's, things. Uh, it's wild. Well, you just uh, we just had a great uh, talk with Chris Trulove, former NFL scout for the Denver Broncos for 16 years, and uh, you broke the news uh, about Kirk Cousins signing with the Atlanta Falcons during that show. So. That was just the latest iteration of all of this stuff we're going to be talking about on this show. Of course, Russell Wilson's going to be the uh, the headliner here going to the Pittsburgh Steelers. But we're going to talk about Kirk. We're going to talk about some other big free agency moves. Baker Mayfield uh, going to stay with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and a lot of other craziness uh, from free agency Monday. Uh, this has been a wild day. I don't know. Like you, You've got to have uh, Twitter on refresh constantly. Yeah, it's crazy. Diane Ursini, Tom Pelissaro, Adam Schefter, they're all breaking – Rappaport, they're all breaking stories right now. Yeah, left and right. This is a big day for, for those uh, who have uh, fast, twitchy thumbs, that's for sure. So, <laughs> all right, here we go. Let's launch ourselves into this big discussion here on Monday, March 11th, the beginning of free agency. <laughs> All right, as mentioned, we just got done with a great talk with uh, Chris Trulove. Go check out that video if you haven't already. Uh, but since we, we, we've we spent a lot of time today on free agency and whatnot, we are going to hit the big topic ones right now, sticking with the quarterbacks and uh, going to talk some, some of those running backs as well. We're going to have a later episode for you. As more free agency news comes around, we'll be able to recap all of the crazy news that has come out. But Obviously, Mark, overnight, uh, around midnight, I think Russell Wilson kind of broke oh, the news himself. There you go. Playing the playing the renegade promo on X. I love it, dude. I, I love that sticks is inter intertwined with my Steelers fan. Like, yeah. <laughs> one year, uh, what, $2 million league minimum? $1.2 point, $1. million. A cool $1.2 million. So that's, opposite of Kirk that's Cousins. the biggest thing of this. It's <laughs> very much the opposite of Kirk Cousins. Uh, yeah, that's the biggest thing of this news, I think, is that regardless, I mean, we'll talk about the fit and if this makes sense, it it, it does for a lot of reasons. But the fact that they only have to pay one point two million dollars, the, the price of a backup for a, a quarterback that is probably top 20 in the league, I would think you could still make that argument today. Um, that's a no brainer for Pittsburgh. Right. I mean, I'm just tossing you for initial thoughts uh, that that's who wouldn't want to you know take that deal if you're a team looking for a, a quarterback to add to the room. Yeah, listen, Pittsburgh, uh, they've officially put Kenny Pickett 100% on notice. This is going to be, it seems like, an open competition to start with, I think, Russ already starting with, like, maybe the first step, like a step ahead, and may the best man win. And if you're Russ, you say to yourself, okay, I have a win-now roster, I have weapons, I have a culture, I have, uh, yes, a tougher division, and yes, a tough AFC, I'm stuck in the AFC, but... If things go well and I can lead Pittsburgh to the playoffs and win this job, then maybe I can get myself an, 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 a two-year, more money guaranteed and wind my career in Pittsburgh, which is a great place you know, historically to be. And if you're Kenny Pickett, you say to yourself, if I can go into camp and I can beat out Russ, who's legitimate competition, who's fighting for his career, well, then I've earned the right to be the starter and, 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 you know, I, 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 no one will question it in that, in that regard, because Russ is going to be as motivated as possible to win now. Anyways, I think Russ will win the job. I think Russ will start. Um, a lot of it'll just be then you're going to be in this world of hurt where if they are, you know, three and three through six weeks and coming off a really ugly loss at Cincinnati and Russ threw two interceptions, it was the reason they lost the game. Are you cheering for Kenny Pickett? Like that's yeah, that's the yeah. only thing I fear for you is that that's going to be the fandom. I've been there as a fan. It is a, it is the worst scenario. Having two quarterbacks is way worse than having one quarterback. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's like the the old story phrase of uh, if you have two quarterbacks, you have none. I think Bill Walsh yeah. may have said that. You know, when the the Joe Montana and Steve Young uh, situation arose, but. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it's it's not the most ideal situation all around just looking at it holistically, certainly for Kenny Pickett. But 
uh, for the Pittsburgh Steelers and everything moving forward. But it's one of those things where it's like, oh, God, that's such a bargain. Like, we have you have yeah. to do it, especially for a team that was needed to add to the room to begin with. Mitch Trubisky yeah. was you out. An upgrade. Mason Rudolph is a free agent. You don't know if he's coming back. So, really, you were stuck with one quarterback. You had to get new guys in. Ryan Tannehill was the thought for a while because of his history with Arthur Smith. But my point has always been, They've said all along that they wanted that it was going to be a competition this year, regardless. Like Kenny Pickett was going to be in a competition, and it never felt right if that competition was Mason Rudolph versus Kenny Pickett because we've already kind of seen that last year where Kenny was healthy and they stuck with the hot hand, Mason Rudolph. But also, how much does that push Kenny Pickett? Um, how much of it is a uh, is settling either way type of situation? And then you bring Ryan Tannehill in, and it's clear at this point of his career that it wasn't going to be that much of a yeah. fire under the under the belly type of thing. But getting a Russell Wilson in, a guy that literally is a starting quarterback in this league, yeah. Now all of a sudden, to take any like this is this is the time to put up or shut up for your career and for your tenure here as the Pittsburgh Steelers quarterback. Go out, win the job, or else we're moving on essentially. And so I think from that perspective this will probably help provide clarity. If Kenny Pickett does end up starting games because of a situation where Russell's playing poorly or whatever, then I think already the decision, decision's been made. I think whoever starts week one, the decision is going to be made then on what the future of Kenny Pickett is. If it's Kenny Pickett, he beat out Russell Wilson. We're riding with Kenny. And uh, at least for this year, we're going to give him an opportunity to see how it is. If it's Russell Wilson, then it's we are punting on the Kenny Pickett experiment. Even if he comes back and plays totally. because Russ is performing poorly, it's going to be a separation at some point regardless. Totally. He's clearly not the quarterback of the future. So from that perspective, I think this is all going to provide clarity on that front. I agree with you. I think Russ is going to win this job, and I think it's it, it's his job to lose, essentially. I do think they'll still give an opportunity for competition there, of course. Um, but you know, if, if Russell doesn't end up being the starting quarterback at this point, then, you know, either Kenny just absolutely balled out or something went completely wrong one way or the other. So I think regardless, the good thing for Steelers fans and for Pittsburgh is that they're almost guaranteed to get better quarterback play this year than they did last year. And from totally. that perspective, I'm feeling good. Uh, you won 10 games last year with pretty rough quarterback play throughout with Matt Canada. Now you bring in Arthur Smith, a very competent offensive coordinator. Um, you know, a, a guy who has had success with his offense. Well, he and has now a you insert too. a Hall of Fame, a potential Hall of Fame quarterback into the mix. Yeah. I think that bodes well. The one, the one uh, uh, not that I see is that I don't know how well Russell Wilson really fits with Arthur Smith's offense because. Arthur Smith is a very uh, rhythm-based and a very um, uh, intentional offense. And Russell Wilson is so heavily built on his career of being an out-of-structure guy. Arthur Smith is very much structure. He creates plays out of totally. the same formation. 15 different variations of a play can come from that one formation. So Russell is going to have to go very – like. We're going with the hot read on this one. We're going with the designated plays. And um, so if Russell can can adapt to that style, uh, then I think that it could be, you know, very beneficial for all parties involved. But yeah, one point two million dollars, an opportunity for him to, you know, uh, end his career the way he wants to and uh, and still getting making 40 yeah. million dollars from the Denver Broncos in the process. No, it's the right win -win. fit, and it's a it's not a shock. I don't think any of us are yeah. shocked. It, it seemed like that that's where the tides were turning, and um, regard and and if you're Pittsburgh, if it's a disaster this year, well, then it creates that clarity too of we just need to completely start over, at, and maybe even just go into a rebuild. You know what I mean? Sell off the pieces and just and start fresh. But you'll you'll know a year from now you'll have a ton more answers than you'll have questions. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's the name of the game right there. And look, they're just seeking their first playoff win in seven years. And so get Russell in here, get TJ Watt a playoff win. He hasn't had one like these guys aren't getting any younger. And so, yeah, this is this to me said we we need to move faster here. Like Kenny, we can't wait for Kenny any longer. Yeah. It's been two seasons and um, Russell's at least a guy that now gets them in that 
uh, position where they can legitimately compete for a playoff win. I don't know about Super Bowl, but playoff win at, at least uh, you know puts them in a better position there uh, to compete on that front. So going off of that, oh, and by the way, a lot of I, I'm seeing a lot of uh, speculation about why Russ would you know, take this job if he wasn't guaranteed a starting spot. I don't think he was guaranteed a starting spot. I think for Russell Wilson, if you have the opportunity to sign with the Pittsburgh Steelers now as free agency is going into a a, a frenzy, strike while the kettle's hot because if Russell waited three, four days, who who knows what the market is? We just saw Kirk Cousins just yeah. signed with the Atlanta Falcons. Like anything could happen. All of a sudden, what it what was Russell Wilson? Yeah, market, and and listen, Russ, you know, Russ. I mean, Russ was not getting. He was getting league no, minimum. No. So he's yeah. going to get league minimum wherever he was going, and you might as well go where you feel like you have the best chance to win. And I think Pittsburgh was his best chance to earn it because he wasn't going to Atlanta. Atlanta was Atlanta. Clearly, that now they they with this contract of this deal. They were hundred percent all in on Kirk, no matter what, and we could we could start with that now if yeah. you want to move to that. Yeah, let's get into it. Let's talk about Kirk Cousins. You've got the numbers. Get, Four get years, a hundred and eighty million dollars for Kirk Cousins. Um, a hundred of it, which is fully guaranteed. Uh, he'll get fifty at signing, which was today. That's his money for this year. He'll get forty next year in twenty twenty five, and then ten in twenty twenty six, which basically makes him. It's like a two-year deal. So it's a four-year deal, but it's really like, can you write the ship for us? Can we get this culture figured out and win with these young, talented players and this good defense in this weak division? Can we win in the next two years? Then once things are set, now we draft your replacement. You start for year three in 2026, and you go and write and you build from there. So Atlanta clearly has said to themselves, this is now our three-year window. This is our plan for the next three years. We think we can we can become a winning organization. I don't think this is a let's win a Super Bowl move. This is a can we become a stable winning organization with the, this head coach and this culture, yeah. and he can help that. And if that's worth $100 million to Arthur Blank and a team that had cap space, so be it. In the NFC, it makes sense. He's still, to me, the concern is he's still coming off an Achilles injury. Right. Yeah, so exactly. that's where I would be like, Ugh. and clearly no one else was going to come close to the money. Because I think if the money was close, he would have stayed in, um, you know, in Minnesota. But I think when you're offered four years and you're offered a hundred million guaranteed, it's really easy to keep your nice house and even maybe the majority of your life in Minnesota and come on down to Atlanta for a couple of years. Uh, well, with, you know, well, your kids aren't in school, school yet. They're, he's got young kids. Like I, I think this move was easier than we thought it would be. And the money they threw at him, it makes sense. If you're Kirk cousins, you take that. If someone's, what is your value? Well, it's whatever someone's willing to pay you. Yeah. They, I think, I think Atlanta probably outbid themselves, but they wanted it to just be done to be a lock, a home run for them. And it feels like that they're celebrating today in Atlanta. Man, I, I feel like you got to be really concerned if you're Minnesota now, because what's the game plan? Uh, you could be very, very easily entering a tumultuous a couple of year period here. If you're not able to, they're uh, in trouble. You know, move up and, and draft your quarterback of the future. Do they take a guy like JJ McCarthy this year who might be available to them there in I the mean, first round? They're I mean, at 11. I don't know what they're, they're at 11. Is. Yeah. And, and they, so they they'd have to, guys. you'd have to do a lot to move up. And there's a, you know, and, and that's given up a lot of, a, a lot of stuff. And we've said already with Minnesota right now, they, they're a team that needs young talent, like losing draft picks. They're in some interesting, they're in an interesting situation. They, they are. They are. Uh, they have a great offensive coach. They have that maybe the best wide receiver core in the league, depending on if Cincinnati actually trades T. Higgins or not. And so they they've got to go and now be aggressive. And whether that's Justin Fields, whether that's drafting at 11, whether that's trading up, Minnesota will be active. And that'll be something that Maybe we'll know when we record on Friday, like what their plan is. Yeah. But uh, they, if Kirk, if paying a hundred million dollars wasn't in the plan for Kirk, and I don't blame them for not doing that. Trust me, yeah, yeah, I don't Kirk. blame them for not doing that. It is, um, I, we got to see what what un unvelops for them because I think just hoping that JJ McCarthy, Bo Nix, or Michael Penix Jr. is just the guy 
with those weapons you have, that is a that's a lot of hoping. It's a lot of hoping. It is. Well, and, and at the same time, you have to do something, I think, to show Justin Jefferson that yes. like, okay, you need to like because one rough year of like if they're going with Jacoby Brissett or something like that. No, no shade on Jacoby. Like he's a great fill in quarterback. He has been for a long time, but it's just Justin Jefferson, we're already like we've already seen some some you know moments here of, of frustration on his end and you know rumors of, of potentially wanting to be traded. If you don't give him, you know, a, a guy that can get him the ball soon, uh, he's gonna want to spend the prime of his career elsewhere. And so yeah. you, you gotta want to help retain your talent at the same time that you already have here. To your point about Atlanta, uh, with Kirk. This, this was a move that that kind of said, yes, we're, we're ready to study the ship, compete for the division. This this is also a thing where, like, hey, like it's possible to do that given that we're in the NFC South. If this was – if the Falcons were in the AFC East or in the AFC North or something like that, you know, I don't, I don't know what move would have made more sense for them in terms of trying to get over that hump. But right now, they can – they could say we've got – probably the best quarterback in the division. Uh, and uh, we've got all of these skill position players. We've got a new young head coach. Like we can win the division next year easily. Uh, by the way, look out Dennis Allen now because Baker Mayfield's back in Tampa. They looked pretty good last year. Atlanta now is Kirk cousins. And so all of a sudden, uh, you know, that hot seat just got a little bit hotter and Carolina. Now, Maybe they feel like, oh, we've got now a few more years of our uh, of our rope because we're just not going to compete next year for this division at that point. But I mean, look, the, it's, look, it's that, look at that quarterback division. We're going to talk about it here next. Baker goes is resigns for a hundred million dollars, yeah. less guarantee. It's a much better deal. Baker is very yeah, 50 similar. Guaranteed. Yeah, I mean, it's a much more workable deal for for uh, Tampa over the next three years. I mean, you compare it with Kirk and. With uh, with uh, uh, Derek Carr, who's now got three years left at a hundred and what twenty million or a hundred and ten million, so you look at those three guys plus Bryce Young, that is a a weak quarterback division overall. But mm -hmm. it does feel like you you if you end up only winning five games in that division, and your quarterback is a part of the reason why your everyone's job is on the chopping block because that is unacceptable. Every one of those teams should be nine and eight next year, right? Maybe not Carolina. Yeah. There may be another year away from that, but if you're Tampa, if you're New Orleans, if you're Atlanta, it is win now. And two of them aren't going to win it just like this past year. So this division just got even more interesting, but I, I would say this morning, even though uh, Tampa's the defending champs and they re-signed Baker on a, on a really good deal. I like the deal. I support the deal. I'm a fan of Baker staying in Tampa. I think it all makes sense. And it's basically a two-year deal where Kirk's is basically a three-year deal. It's four, but it's three. You know, Baker's is three, but it's two. Um, I, you know, God, Godspeed to the quarterback who doesn't win that division and only win seven games because no kidding them yeah. and their organization is going to be a nightmare. I, yeah. I, I think, uh, I think good for Baker Mayfield first and foremost, I think the guy bet on himself, his career appeared to be over as a starting quarterback once he left uh, Cleveland and left all of that money on the table. Yeah. That he could have gotten from the Browns. Now, maybe in hindsight, he still should have taken that deal. Oh, 100%. Um, Browns, <laughs> the Browns certainly hope that he took that deal because they would have yeah. settled with $30 million guaranteed right now. Um, but he gets he, he turns around here and gets an opportunity to put $100 million more in, in his bank, 50 at a minimum. And so, you know, good on him. And and Tampa gets to stay competitive. They inked Mike Evans already. So they're they're very stable right now. They feel they feel um solid and um and, and an opportunity here to still compete for that division and be the owners of that division within the next three years and really mark i mean unless you're the chiefs unless you're the bills or the Bengals, you know most of these teams are always at any given time just in a three-year window you know a lot of yeah a lot of guys you can't really plan that far ahead no uh, in this league, because so many things happen, injuries happen, players totally leave agree. that you didn't think you would. So to be able to say we're Tampa and we're good for the next two to three years, we have our quarterback, we have 
a lot of the Mike guys Evans place, back. That's a good good place to be uh, for a yeah. lot of teams. A lot of teams wish they could be there. And so uh, it'll be yeah, really interesting aspect. to see everyone's NFC South predictions next year. You know what I mean? Like yeah, I know right? August like, and predicting there? the NFC South is going to be fun. I mean, uh, it, it's going to be the most like kind of talked about division of the, you know, you want to talk about the exciting, good divisions, but that one's going to be thrilling in its own, in its own weird way. And uh, I, you know, I, I, the, the news just keeps on breaking. As we said, we'll, we will have a, an episode later this week that kind of, you know, once the dust settles and really kind of go through overall what certain teams are doing. But Dan, a couple big free agent running back uh, mm -hmm. co uh, contracts. We got a new home for Josh Jacobs. We got a new home for Saquon Barkley and a new home for DeAndre Swift. Um, I was on record saying that there would only be two running backs I'd be willing to give a three-year deal to, and that was Swift and that was Jacobs. Well, Saquon got a three-year deal, too, from the Eagles. Eagles on in on Saquon, yeah. were you surprised versus the Cowboys? I thought uh, the Cowboys maybe would have been more favorites to land one of the big running backs versus the Eagles, but they gave him $26 million guaranteed. It's a lot of money for the running back market, but he, you know, he was one of those, that was one of those teams that I thought would be a very interesting and cool fit for Saquon. Yeah. Um, Houston was another that I, I thought maybe they would, uh, you know, take a stab, but so far, I mean, mo all of the top free agent running backs outside of Derrick Henry, uh, have their themselves a new home. So it doesn't seem like Houston, uh, is going to be in play, uh, unless they do go and get a Derrick Henry, but that doesn't seem like as good of a fit, but Saquon with Philadelphia makes a lot of sense to me. And I think it gives them maybe a little bit more stability at the position that they know what they're going to get in a true three down player at that position. So I think that's, that's really big. And the Eagles, you know, struggled to run the ball a lot at, at times last year and, and just disjointed as an offense entirely. So I think anytime you can add a playmaker of his quality to your offense, you're going to feel really good about it, but especially an Eagles team, that is built so much on the run and have a quarterback that, uh, you know, runs a lot as well. You're going to be able to really do a lot of interesting things with Saquon there in that offense. And, you know, you know what you did mention was um, uh, Tony Pollard is going to the Titans, a three year, 24. Three, that's a lot. Deal. I don't love that deal. I that don't was, love that's it's a lot for, for Tony Pollard for He's sure. 32. The other guys are younger. Swift and Jacobs yeah. are 26. I think Saquon's 27. Pollard's already yep. And I get it. He's a different back. You're going to use him differently. Like I, I expect them still to have like a power run game and Tony Pollard is a compliment, but that's a lot. Aaron Jones lot, just got released. Yeah. Aaron yeah. Jones so to make room for released. Josh Jacobs, which is Josh Jacobs in green Bay. That to me signals, I think they maybe keep D AJ Dillon too. Maybe the green Bay tries to resign him and they kind of like just retool that Aaron Jones was getting more beat up. You know, in yeah. his older age, he in and this kind of you know resets like, hey, we're still going to be a, an efficient running team. I like the move actually for Green Bay. I like the move a lot for Josh Jacobs. I hate it as a Bears fan, but the you know if you're going to a team like Green Bay, you're going from a really dysfunctional organization to a really functional organization, and you're the guy. I was I said it from day one. I was comfortable giving Swift and Jacobs three year deals, and. You know, I don't think they overpaid for Josh Jacobs, and I certainly don't think the Bears overpaid for for Swift either. Yeah, no, I I'd like to hear your thoughts on Swift because obviously, you know, the Bears couldn't figure out that running back room last year, and it was yeah. uh, kind of a mess in terms of what they were getting. They at least now get a guy who's got that star power to him. I mean, we saw flashes in Detroit and uh, and, and even in Philadelphia last year as well. Uh, but now, I mean, it, it doesn't concern you at all that he's now been a journeyman, essentially, of three teams in, in well, two and a half years. He um, remember it doesn't concern you. The, the the thing that was interesting is that remember he was the featured back, and then Detroit revamped their whole backfield last season. Right, they draft yeah. Gibbs and they signed Montgomery, and Detroit's whole thing was I think they knew they had Gibbs as a target, and and so they were going to move on, you know, in that regard. Anyways, I will say. It doesn't concern me because the Bears have Roshan Johnson. He they drafted him last year, so they still got him for three more years to kind of they're they're going to be the backfield, right? Mm -hmm. You have Swift and Roshan, and you have another year of Khalil Herbert still on a rookie contract, where you're not going to pay him. You're not probably not going to re-sign Khalil. 
The Bears were the second best rushing team in the NFL last year. Now that includes Justin Fields, uh, and they didn't have an, a number one back. Swift is a number one back, and uh, when you team him up now with the backfield with those other names, all of a sudden, yeah, I mean, overall, you're paying your running back room about $11 million a year. That's, for your running back room, really solid for uh, for a a running a team that commits to running the football and and has now a, a really unique stable backs. No, I'm I'm happy about the Swift deal because again he's young, he's in his prime, and he's it's really a two year deal. Again, it's it's a yeah. two year, fourteen million dollars guaranteed. Like people are are panicking a little bit about the number, but it, it, in the end they can move off this and not face a, a cash a cap hit. Remember the cap went up, so you're gonna have to spend. Yeah, and the Bears had the second most cap space to spend anyways. Exactly. Exactly. You know, it's a good move for them. And, 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 and any way that you can go into the draft without having a must draft at a position yeah. is always good to, to well, and those that, options open for yourself. And I know we'll talk again on Friday. We'll do a whole show kind of revamping, but it, for the bears, just quickly, that's exactly what you said. They, they filed safety, Kevin bird, you know what I mean? Uh, buy yeah, it, and yeah. then you get, and then you get swift. You, 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 you know, you get Jalen Johnson on the big contract. All of a sudden, your draft needs shrink. And that is, it's a really, really great thing. It's what free agency should be about. Shrinking your needs so your draft plan becomes clear. Minnesota, yeah. their draft plan, I don't know. I guess it's going to be a quarterback. And if you're Atlanta, your draft plan now has to be uh, offensive line, protect your investment for the next two years. And, and you know, make a defense that is capable of being the best in that division because we saw at times that it was flashy, but uh, man, today is just one of those days and it's just such a fun day. And you know what certain teams are doing, the Eagles are spending a ton of money kind of going yeah. all in. That's where the Saquon and Landon Dickerson. Yeah. Yeah. The Saquon deal feels very, you know, when Fletcher Cox retired, we didn't get a chance to talk about right, that. Yep. Yep. But the Saquon deal feels very exciting and also very like, oh man, this if if things don't work out, I mean, Nick Sirianni's on the hot seat, well, and now you're you're adding in, you're spending a ton of money in free agency, and this is a team with very much high expectations. The Eagles could be ready to implode. I mean, it, this is going to be so much fun to watch. I, I, I and. This is why we love the NFL. Great time man. of year, man. It's a great time of year. It's why we do the show, and uh, and and that's why the show does not stop after the Super Bowl because we've got days like this where we have too much to talk about, frankly. So yeah, as you alluded to, another episode here on on uh, on the Football Lounge with Mark and Dan to recap even more of the free agency frenzy coming later this week. The the, the tweets are not going to stop. The news is not going to stop flowing <laughs> no. for several days. So. We'll have a, a much more holistic, uh, comprehensive look at all of this later on this week. But for now, that will do it for us here on the show. Like, subscribe. We really appreciate all of the support. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you back here sooner rather than later.